Welcome back riders. The Hawk X is at 940 miles, just under a thousand. So far the bike's been doing great. I need to do some basic maintenance and cleaning to it today, check up on a few things and make sure there's no gremlins creeping underneath. As expected, this bike is easy enough to do maintenance to, but leaning over on the kickstand, the left side of the bike is a bit tricky to get to, especially when you need to clean and service the chain, so I picked up this little budget motorcycle lift from a company called Vevor. It's no thrills and basic, but it gets both tires a few inches off the ground and just makes working on the left side of the bike a lot easier. No more bending over and looking up. The lift comes mostly assembled. You just slide in two pins and two C-clips to attach the lever. It's low profile and easy to store when you're done with it. It has a 440 pound capacity, which is more than enough for the Hawk X. Appears to be perfectly well suited for dual sports and dirt bikes. I wouldn't try and use this on full size motorcycles. It uses a slip resistant rubber pad on top, which seemed to do the job just fine, even on my uneven surface. The platform adjusts to the base with a threaded shaft for fine adjustments. It has a locking ring. It was a bit finicky to work with the first time for fine adjustments, but you really only have to do this once, so once it's set, you're done. Pressing your foot down on the lever lifts and locks the unit about 6 inches high, which was just enough to get both tires off the ground for my bike. Once fully extended, it does lock in place. You have to pull up on the lever to release it, but it does include an extra security latch just in case you bump the lever. As far as I can tell, this is a non-assisted lift. You use your own body weight and leverage to get the bike up into the air. It has a pneumatic shock to prevent the bike from slamming down to the ground when you release it. It's a simple unit that has one job and appears to do it just fine, so there's not much more to say about it. I would have liked to have seen one improvement though. I would imagine that if your bike is unbalanced or rocks back and forth multiple times, it puts a lot of stresses on the welds between the platform and the base. For an increased peace of mind and to extend the life of the unit, I wish they would have put some gussets between the bottom of the platform and the shaft. This should help take some stress off of these welds and prevent cracks, which seem inevitable in the long run. But it's working for now, so let's go ahead and get this Hawk cleaned up and I'll give you guys a few updates on the bike. Since owning the Hawk X, I've used it just about every day to go everywhere for any reason. Where I fully expected the updated counterbalanced engine to make a big difference, I'll now go as far to say as it's the single biggest improvement they could have ever made to these cheap mail order dual sports. Having so far not found a single loose nut, bolt, or stud anywhere on the bike gives the Hawk X a strong vote of confidence. The bike is of course not without its issues, it has all the standard downfalls of the cheap Chinese dual sports, but these issues are easier to handle when the bike's not actively trying to destroy itself. As is common with nearly every owner of one of these dual sports, I had to replace the carburetor right away. The bike simply would not idle. I quickly upgraded to an LED headlight as the stock bulb was almost useless at night. I then swapped out to a Japanese chain which goes much longer before requiring an adjustment. For some reason, the fuel gauge is incredibly inaccurate, dropping down to empty once you reach about 100 miles. Just to give you some perspective, a full tank on my Hawk X will go well over 300 miles. To get around this, I just reset my trip meter every time I fill up the tank, and this gives me a pretty good idea of how far I can go. This works reliably enough for me to not have to deal with fixing the fuel gauge because surprisingly the odometer and speedometer are spot on accurate. Having matched the bike's speedometer against radar speed signs and my phone's own GPS, it was nice to see that it wasn't even one mile off. Thanks to the lack of vibration, the bike is easy enough to settle into under extended trips. It's not perfect. There are times when you want to stretch out and push yourself back, but you really can't due to the hump in the back of the seat. With that being said, I was able to take it on a 100 mile day trip and didn't have a sore back or knees when I got off the bike. So, it's good enough. I've added a few convenient features and utility comforts to the bike. Thank you. 
adding this universal tank bag is one of my favorite conveniences for odds and ends carrying my lunch, drinks, snacks, phone, accessories, whatever. It fits a surprising amount of cargo for its size and just attaches to the tank with magnets so you can pull it off when you need to gas up. I was a bit concerned when adding the tank bag that bending this vent tube down for the gas tank would cause a vacuum lock, but so far after using the bag for about a month I haven't noticed any issues, and even if one does creep up in the future, this is an easy enough problem to solve. A USB charge port to keep my phone topped off under longer rides, but I end up using this mostly to charge cameras for videos. The added bonus of this unit is it's quick to remove, it's waterproof, and it has a voltmeter so you can keep an eye on what your bike's charging system is doing. Being all too familiar with what can happen when an unexpected flat tire happens on a two-wheel vehicle, I went ahead and added a tire pressure monitoring system which has a custom alarm for high and low pressure. The peace of mind for safety is an obvious bonus, but the convenience of just looking down and seeing if you need to add some pressure to your tires when leaving the house is really nice. There's of course no getting around cleaning and maintaining your chain on a regular basis, but adding the chain oiler which allows me to oil the chain while I'm riding the bike is another convenience that I just don't have to deal with off of the bike. The understandable and justifiable fear of instant regret when purchasing a new motorcycle online for less than $2,000 has thankfully passed. I wish the best possible experience to any other riders who purchase this bike because I absolutely love this thing. Having the first 1,000 miles knocked out with only the expected and easy to deal with issues, wish me luck on 2K. If you're interested in this motorcycle lift or any of the other items mentioned in the videos, there'll be a link in the description. I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe.